Hi everyone, I'm Nasim Hassan and today I'm going to talk about a very important step in the design of power amplifier. A power amplifier can deliver maximum power to its load if it's matched. Now we run load pool simulation to see if the power is maximum. In cadence batches so we run PSS or periodic steady state analysis to see this load pool simulation. And after the simulation, we can see a set of constant power contours which suggest the maximum power and the optimum load that is necessary to get that power. So let's run cadence virtues of simulation. This is a 32 nanometer CMOS MOSFET. You might have your own PDQ transistor, whatever is your technology node. I mean 65, 45 or 32 nanometer, the load pool method will be analogous. So place your PDK transistor in the schematic window. I'm going to use this MOSFET into common source configuration. So let's put some DC power supply. Go to create instance and type analog lib for analog library and the cell name is VDC. This DC supply is VDD. So place it here and the second DC supply will be VGS. Place it there and finally we need a reference VSS which is essentially grounded. All right now we need input and output port. So again go there and type port this is our input port and that one is our output port. Okay, now select input port and press Q from keyboard. This will bring the property window. You can also right click on the port and select properties. Both are same. And we'll define a few more variables. and make sure the port resistance is 50 ohm. All right. Now we need a gate resistor. It should be very high. So for resistor type RES and 5K is enough. All right. Now we need DC block capacitor for input and output port. So for capacitor, CAP, and should be high enough to allow AC signal to pass. So place one cap here, and another cap here. We need to rotate this cap for better placement. So select rotate, and click on this cap. Do the same for this cap. Okay, now we need an RF choke at the drain line. So for inductor, IND, and should be high enough to block RF signal. Place it at the drain line. Okay, now we need an impedance tuner so that we can sweep the load and for that type RF examples and the cell name is port adapter and we will need some variables this is our desired frequency at which we are going to run the load pool and these are the magnitude and phase of the reflection coefficient gamma 
Okay. All right, looks good. And place it here. Now, let's arrange the elements a little bit so that we can connect properly. Let's place the voltage sources a little bit here. And now let's connect each element by where. Okay. This is the body terminal of the MOSFET. We should tie it with the source, which will be centrally grounded. And this is the drain line. So connect the DC block cap with the drain line. Okay. And this one is our output port. Okay, and I'm extending this wear because we need to label on this wear. Okay, now we need to label each terminal in order to establish an electrical connection among them. So go there. And since there are six VSS terminals, so type VSS six times. This is VSS this one as well and that one and for the input port this is the source terminal and for the output port we also need to provide gate and drain bias so type VDD and VGS two times here is the VDD and this one also, and this is the gate bias. Okay, all right, now we can check and save. For that, click on this icon. Now we can see our netlist has been generated for this circuit. Now we are ready to simulate the circuit. Go to launch and click on ADEL. Now right click on this window and select copy from cell view. This will load all the design variables. So this is our frequency at which we are going to run load pool and this one is zero and this is the input power minus 10 dBm and theta is 0 and VDD is 1 volt and VGS is 500 millivolts
Since we are using PDK MOSFET, we must give PDK library path of this MOSFET. So we need to browse to our PDK library from this button. You will have your own PDK library, so you have to give your own PDK library path. Without providing this library path, you will encounter error message. All right, I have entered my PDK library path, and this one is a process corner variation of MOSFET. As the CMOS node is shrinking, checking the process variation is getting important. In each pair, we got two letters. First one is for NMOS, and the second one is for PMOS. NN is for normal NMOS and normal PMOS, and FF is for fast NMOS and fast PMOS, and SS is for slow NMOS and slow PMOS. We'll talk about it later in another video, and for the time being, we will select NN, which is normal NMOS and normal PMOS. All right, now we will choose a simulation engine for expector for load pulling. So we will choose PSS or periodic steady state analysis and we will select harmonic balance engine. It is powerful nonlinear analysis tool unlike S parameter which is linear analysis tool. And click auto calculate. And if the number of harmonics is too low, you will receive warning message and simulation may not proceed. So 11 harmonics looks sufficient and accuracy can be moderate or conservative, whatever you choose. And enable load pull. Okay, now Let's define two variables, magnitude and phase of reflection coefficient, gamma. This one is for magnitude. It will be sort from 0 to 1. And with a step 40, maybe. And this one is for phase. It will be sort from 0 to 359 degrees. OK. And make sure Z0 is 50 ohm, which is the reference resistance. The simulation engine is going to sweep this complex load impedance in this mid chart to find out the optimum load impedance at the output. And we'll receive the maximum power at this optimum load impedance. So that's the basic concept of load pull. And uh, one more thing is remaining. We need to save the terminal current to avoid any error message. And so go to outputs and to be saved. And select this terminal. The current will be saved. Yeah, you can see a check mark appears under the save option. Now we are ready to simulate. All right, when the status gets ready, that means simulation is done. And you can go to results and then direct plot and main form. Okay, too many windows, we need this one. Select power contours and select DBM. We'd like to see the power contours in DBM. And this many power contours will be displayed in this mid chart. Nine is more than enough. And keep the reference resistance as 50 ohms. And there are 11 harmonics data available, but we need the fundamental only because 
uh, we are trying to run the load pool at this fundamental frequency, which is 300 gigahertz. And check this one. And select this terminal. There you go. These are the constant power contours. On each line, the output power remains constant. And this is our optimum load impedance, Z opt. And with this load impedance, we will receive maximum output power. And you can check each counter information from this panel. And you can see corresponding power at each contour. That's how we run load pool in cadence virtue. So if you have any question or comment, you're welcome to ask. And please like and share this video. And thank you very much for watching.